that I had. Let's turn to Hurling. James O'Connor, good morning to you. How are you getting on? Morning, Jeff. Good. Uh, well, well, that was a pretty interesting weekend of hurling, all told. Um, and Tony Kelly is the best hurler we've ever seen when he plays like that. Yeah, magical, Ger. Um, you know, I, I would say I was on duty in Limerick and, and didn't see the match, but um, I saw the three points. You know, the two, uh, the one on, on, on either sideline, and then the absolutely outrageous score where he was practically on the end line and just bent it in off the, off his left side. Um, and you know, I don't know what the commentary said, ridiculous, which which summed it up. Um, but I hadn't seen some of the other scores, and the one that he carried half the length of the pitch um, and then struck it off the hurley into a, a near dale um, and had in the goal then where, you know, he times the run and, you know, just beautiful finish. So, yeah, look, it's awesome stuff from an awesome player. And, um, you know, he's in a, 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 the form of his life. And, and, and obviously it bodes well for Clare because at the moment, um, you know, he's certainly doing all but carrying the team on, on, on his back. And uh, it's just magical to watch here. We had him on at the very start of the season, and um, I remember looking up his age and being shocked. To, to the, he's, he's still only 26. Like he could be, he could be doing this for a long time if he wants to. Yeah, well, so look, there's a lot of miles in the clock um, too. You know, it, it feels like he's been around forever. Um, obviously, with the with the, the minors and the you know straight into the 21s and three All Ireland titles there in 2013. Um, but w w whatever he's done in the last 12 months, you know, and, and, I, and I know he's worked incredibly hard. And he's in fantastic shape, but just the, the form and, and like this isn't top of the ground conditions either, Jerry. He's not playing in Croke Park or, or um, you know, Parky Keys, and and Turles even is, is is still a bit soft on on top. So, you know, Port Leash is a place that I think you always find it hard to create space in. But you know, just the performance levels are are different planet stuff. And you know, I mean, 17 points, you know, 12 and 115 is is unbelievable from a guy who isn't playing in the inside the inside forward line, or at least not not all his time is there. And it's just uh, he's, he's just exceptional at the moment, and obviously he's he, he's going to take serious watching for whoever we'll player draw uh, next weekend. Well, we're about to find out who's uh, who's going to um, be in that draw. The draw's going to be made in the next couple of minutes, and we'll bring it to you as soon as we get it. But let's hear from Davy Fitz here, speaking with Liam Spratt of South East Radio. You are committed to another year, aren't you? You'll regroup, I suppose, and have a think. And no harm for yourself to have a regroup and just for everybody just take a break and regroup and think. It would be nice to be heard next week, of course it would. Yeah, yeah. Like, listen, yeah, I have another one, of course, if I want it. I'll do whatever is best for the boys. That's what I, I'll always take a week or two and reflect. And the first thing will always come is Wexford, number one. It is a place in my heart like no others. There's no games or any of this bull or this messing about trying to get Wexford to hold me on or stay. That's not... I don't go into that. I'm no interest in that. It'll just be whatever the best is for the boys. I absolutely adore it down there. And I'm, I really mean this. I'm so gutted for the Wexford people. I wanted to give you something to really have for the rest of the year. But that's the way it goes. We've had some unreal days. I suppose we waited. People have said to me the last few years, what, like, what have you achieved? I, I'll tell you, we've achieved a promotion, two Welsh Cups and a Leinster Championship, which we hadn't since 2004. That's not a bad day's work, no matter what anybody says, and we're competing up there. Are we disappointed with our last two performances? We are. We want to win them, and I, I accept that. I'm sure all these lads will go back to the well and look at it again. I have nothing but absolute respect for them and for the county board as well. The county board are one of the best county boards out there, trust me, they're incredible. Uh, James, in the end, it was a, a limp out year from, from Wexford and really disappointing considering how close they were to knocking tip off last year. Yeah, and that absolutely has to exacerbate the disappointment, Sure. Um, yeah, they never raised the gallop. And, you know, I, I think when, you know, the Wexford Championship, um, you know, was announced it was going to be ran off really quickly, um, I think that probably turned a few heads. And, and in a way, you know, maybe it put a bit of extra pressure on, on the players and, and, and on the management team. And, you know, they look like a team that maybe trained exceptionally hard and, you know, we're just flat and, and, and you know, that, that running game, you know, number one takes exceptional energy and it takes, you know, a lot of athleticism. And I'm not sure if Wexford are, are, are blessed with, you know, the Darif it's given and Mark Coleman and Tony Kelly type type players that can that can maybe play that kind of running game. And whatever, you know, whether it was a train, whether it was, you know, I don't know, the, just the, the long year, maybe a pre-season earlier in the year, another pre-season, um, you know, ahead of the championship, but they just didn't have the energy um or that never reached the levels that, 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 that we thought they might after after last year. But I mean, listen, they, they'd one foot in the All Ireland final year. Um, so bitterly disappointing. And, and obviously, you know, I felt in um, in Limerick, you know, that you had to look at Galway's form in the context of how flat Wexford were. And, and you're kind of saying, well, maybe Kilkenny now, and that's maybe the way it panned out. Yeah. And actually, it turned out that um, 
Kilkenny had a little bit of the Kilkenny magic that they required. And they also had that kind of stereotypical result against Galway where they're behind, 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 and then it's a, a boom, and all of a sudden there's a brittleness to Galway, which I thought we maybe had seen disappear when they actually won the All-Ireland. They, they were supposed to be over performances or moments in the games that would cost them like that. But I don't know, it, it seemed weird that like that was such an old school, you know, we could have seen that game between Galway and Kilkenny at any point, essentially from 1990. Yeah, I mean, five points up, sure, you, you, you know, they looked comfortable um, and you reckon they, they, they kick on from here, but, I mean, probably just, uh, you know, Ian Murphy is maybe a little bit rash. I mean, OK, he's, and I thought he played really well against Wexford and, you know, he's still learning his, his trade and it takes time to come to level, but he just didn't maybe need to come off his line and, I mean, it was a moment of genius from, from Richie Hogan and then, you know, TJ, obviously, seconds later, um, you know, it's a hammer blow and yet, Galway came back and, and they were two ahead with, with eight minutes left, sure, Um but, you know, they probably paid the price for not keeping their boot on Kenny's neck when they, when, when they had it there. And, you know, even later on, I thought, you know, there's still, still time to just pick your points off. Um, and maybe they tried to force, I don't know, they hit the post, the Joe hit the post and they could have free and so on. But, yeah, I, I still think we haven't seen the last of Galway because it has to... Have well, done. let me let me um, just tell everybody what the breaking news is. We, might, we definitely haven't seen the, the last of them, but their reward for defeat in the Leinster final is a uh, qualifier against Tipperary next Saturday, which means that Waterford take on Clare. All of a sudden, these two games are on a bit of a knife edge. Like, I don't know what's going to happen in the Galway tip game. Um, but it's pretty interesting. Oh, it is, sure. That's, yeah. Mm. I mean, I won't say I'm thrilled with the draw, right? Um, because Waterford George, you know, yesterday, like, I mean, I thought they were exceptional yesterday. But certainly tip, tip Galway is a massive match now because tip, you know, are starting to find their mojo a little bit. I mean, they didn't play particularly well at the weekend, um, but they grounded out and, you know, they've, they've, they've found a way to get it done. I think Sheedy's a little bit wiser about what's required now in this time of the year in these conditions um, compared to what they started with maybe against uh, against Limerick. So, yeah, that's that's a massive, massive match. And just to, to confirm, obviously, if um, Clare and Tip win, there'll be a draw uh, needed f the following week after that. But it's Galway against Tipperary, Waterford against Clare. Those games are going to be on Saturday and we'll have um, throw-in times and venues confirmed a little bit later on. Jamesy, where are Waterford right now? Because we're about three years on since the appearance in the All-Ireland final. And it feels even against Limerick yesterday, you know, you're sort of giving them a bit of a pat in the back for to put it up to Limerick for, for quite a while without ever looking like winning. Uh, are they very much on the road to recovery after a difficult couple of years or are there still quite a way to go? No, I think they're definitely in the right track, uh, Nathan. I mean, you know, look, at obviously, you know, Brick Walsh retired and there were maybe some players, Noel Connors and so on, Morris. And they were maybe coming, you know, into the twilight of their careers, I suppose, in, in, in 2017. So, you know, Liam Cavist is very much, you know, deciding that he's he, it's on it's a rebuilding effort that he's going to bring in new players. He's going to put his own stamp on things. And I, you know, I, I was hugely impressed, Nathan, with them against Cork and the, their effort and their energy and, and the work rate and all those kind of things. Um, but I didn't think that they'd, they'd really be able to live with Limerick yesterday. You know, I thought Limerick just started operating on a different level to, to, to everybody. Uh, but Watford were right in that game. I mean, they were level heading into the last quarter, and even. Even at the very end, they had a couple of half goal chances when they were maybe two, three points down. Um, you know, the, the, like with a little bit of luck and maybe with a bit of better decision making, they might have actually got something, got something more out of it. So, no, for me, on the right track, and it was heroic, I thought, at times. I mean, some of the play from, you know, Stephen Bennett, Bennett um, obviously, De Borca was outstanding. You know, Shane Fives went off at the end with what looked like a quarter, a hamstring injury. So, he, he's going to be a big loss because he's, he's hurling well. So, I think a lot of positives for Liam Cahill. Um, now, he doesn't have maybe the marquee forwards, the TJ Reeds, you know, a, a Joe Canning or whatever, the, the, the skip to win the match here. But Desi Hutchinson um, is going to be a good player. Uh, you know, we know what he's capable of, and, and he'd be better for that experience and, and probably better on faster drier ground as well. So, no, look, a lot of positives for, for Watford. I mean, they really, really put it up to Limerick yesterday. And Limerick had to dig deep, um, you know, to get over the line uh, at, at the end of it. Everybody had to dig deep, and in a way that kind of, um, with uh, maybe the exception of uh, Clare, who had it handy enough, uh, uh, like we expected that Cork were probably not going to be as good as they ended up being, and that game was close enough in the melting pot to the very end. That's the type of thing that maybe will improve Tip, or is that a sign that actually Tip aren't that good? Well, I think it's a sign Tip will improve. I mean, you know, Cork have a lot of athleticism, Ger, um, you know, good players, good forwards, and in the first half, you know, against, I mean, the conditions were absolutely miserable um, in Limerick. I mean, the first half was played in atrocious conditions, and Cork had to run the ball out of defence and, and, you know, work really, really hard in the middle third, and, 
and they did that and, and Tip were I thought you know whatever they were thank you was maybe two ahead at half time you're saying that's that's a, that's a precarious enough lead but the conditions improved in the second half you know it stopped raining and the wind died down to an extent um, but Tip you know got the changes that they needed to make done I mean you know John McGrath Noel McGrath were both taken off I think bringing Jake Morris out in the middle of the field gave them a lot of athleticism Michael Breen was obviously was awesome with five points from play and in those conditions it was absolutely man of the match stuff um, but they, they showed a resilience and they showed a rootlessness that you know when Morris got the goal or got the opportunity he was only thinking one thing yeah. and uh, it, was, it was an unbelievable finish and that's still the tip mindset and you still you know have to factor in that they know how to get it done and they know how to win these games um, even though they might be at their best and, and the longer they stay in this championship the more dangerous they're going to be and the, the closer they get to Croker as well and that better pitch as we've been talking about on the show all morning one last question for you if, if Tony Kelly can get Clare over Waterford well then surely he must be harder of the air well, he's a, he's a contender, Ger. I mean, certainly at the moment, uh, you know, Luke Keenich is in brilliant form for Limerick. Gerard Hager is in brilliant form for Limerick. Um, you know, there are other guys in the country. TJ still, you know, Galan. got, you know, Galan obviously is, 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 is still doing it. Um, you know, and you look at Ty Deborka, you look at Jamie Barron, the levels these guys are hitting. Uh, so I wouldn't say it's a, you know, look at Tony, he's in, he's in the mix. He's absolutely in the conversation because of what he's done and, and especially what he did in Port Leash. I mean, it was, you know, we all don't know who ridiculous it, it summed it up. But Jared, just, just one final point. Like we were talking to you know JJ Delaney and, and Ali Canning and Nicky English in, in, in Limerick before the game on, on, on Saturday. You know, we were just saying, you know, what these guys are doing, you know, they're they're coming to the cold and wet. They, they may or may not have shower facilities, meetings have been held in the stands, they were handed a box of food and probably eating in the car on the way home. And for the Mayo and Donegal lads, the distances they're probably having to travel. Um, it's exceptional and there's no adulation from the crowds, there's no none of that buzz that you get from Pack stadiums and look at the entertainment they're providing. They deserve huge, huge credit for it and, and fair play to them. Yeah, no, 100%. Well said. Jamesy, great stuff. Thanks, William, for joining us. Cheers, Jerry. Cheers, Nathan. That's an, an underrated Cheers, part of all this, Nathan, is that um, they're doing this at a time. It was uh, it was interesting to hear from um, Cavan earlier on. It was like, we get to go out and do this and it's enjoyable and it's, a, you know, what else would you be doing but sitting at home? And sure, there is that aspect of it, but at the same time, it was incredible entertainment that they served up. Um, there was a, a rake of goal mouse scrambles. A lot of people won't have seen the uh, Cavan down match, um, and not Derry, as they, uh, as they said earlier on. Um, but there was a rake of goal mouse scramble, scrambles. It was a bit of mud wrestling, and it was class to watch. Yeah, and I think by and large, with the exception of what happened with Sligo, it's gone pretty smoothly so far. And the players want to play. The GPA survey showed that, that I think 75%, as long as the protocols were been adhered to, want to go and play. It is still strange at times when you get to the final five minutes and you're waiting for the bit of momentum, that bit of a roar, and it's not there. And depending on what match you're watching, depending on the crowd noise or not, like you can hear a lot of stuff. But it, it feels a bit at times like some of them are still, particularly the hurling more so, maybe it is the lack of a crowd, doesn't feel like it's just quite the intensity of normal. But maybe it is now that we're getting into that pure knockout. knockout. I think so. Like Mayo Galway, yes, it was pretty desperate stuff for the last yeah. 10 minutes. Would it have been any different with a crowd? I'm not sure. Uh, I, well, uh, there would have been a lot of noise because of the desperation, and that might have made you feel at home like it as well. Just a reminder, Galway against Tipperary and Waterford against Clare, that's next weekend. You can't have a replay of the provincial finals. So if Galway win, there are, if um, Galway win, they can't play Kilkenny. And if... Uh, Waterford win, they obviously can't play Limerick. So we might need a draw if um, we get the other two winning through to the uh, to them at that stage. So a uh, pressure moment from the weekend has to be Richie Hogan's goal, A1 from Larry Keegan in Waterford. We'll get to the pressure rankings a little bit later on as well.